Hey, what's going on everybody? Let's talk about how to legally cheat the clock, right? Okay, so that's that's basically our controller at any given day during the week is, is the hours of service. That sets your limits from the minute you go on duty until the end of your day. And what you can piece into that is determined by what you have on your clock. Well, let's talk about a couple of ways to cheat that. Now, everybody should know that in a given eight day rolling period, you can only work up to 70 hours. So you can't even utilize your 11 hours of drive time you have each day because in seven days, if you used all 11 hours, you'd be seven hours in violation. So you have to manage your time and time is your, your time is priceless because any of your time that's wasted is money lost. All of those minutes or even if they're compounded over the week turn into hours that isn't used generating you revenue is just time that was wasted and it was time that was lost. And if it rolls down to the end of the week, if you run all week to where you're pushing up against your 70 and that actually keeps you from delivering freight or you have to take a break earlier than you needed to, which is gonna add a day to your week, you've lost money that day. It, it doesn't just carry over. You lost money that day. You weren't able to, to make as much as you were gonna be. So let's talk about a couple of ways to cheat that legally. <clears throat> now, there are only certain things that DOT require you to show logs. And the only reason we keep logs in a truck as a dri from a driver aspect is for the compliance, is for DOT. We don't keep this for us. We know what time it is. We don't keep this for this, the customers. They don't care what your time is, clearly. They'll waste it long, they'll waste it quicker than anybody will. We keep this for DOT. Now, what does DOT want to see? We can go even further into that and refer to FMCSR 395. It is the employer's choice whether the driver shall record stops made during a tour of duty as off-duty time. However, employers may permit drivers to make the decision as to how the time will be recorded. Who's your employer? Maybe ask your employer about that. I'm my employer. DLT only wants to see a few things. They wanna see you on duty for a post trip. They wanna see you on the drive line when you're driving. They wanna see a 30 minute off duty break. They wanna see you on duty for fueling. They wanna see you on duty for loading and unloading and they wanna see you on duty for inspections, and they wanna see you on duty for a post trip. Now, you only have to flag a post trip. Now, how much time do you need to spend doing each one of those things? Someone tell me. Show me in a book a minimum or a maximum amount of time it takes to do any of that. So here's how you cheat that. It could only, it, it could take me 12, 15 minutes, it could take me half an hour to do a pre-trip on this truck and trailer. Now, why is that? Well, because sometimes if I find something that's wrong and I fix it, it's going to add time to that. If I'm low on oil and I add some, it's going to add time. Anything is gonna add time, even adding washer fluid. And when you, nobody but you is going to tell you when to go on duty. So here's what I'm saying. It may take you half an hour to do a pre-trip. Before you leave, go edit your log. Like we're talking about, you're about to pull out and you've done your pre-trip. Before you leave, go edit your log. Some logs allow you to insert an event. Some logs allow you to splice an off-duty event. Just add 10, 12, 13 minutes. Do your DVIR during that time which is gonna ramp it up, you know, another minute or two. And then you pull it out before your, your law kicks in, might take anywhere from, it might be immediate, it might take another minute. So therefore your pre-trips are only gonna be, you know, however long, ago, however long ago you backed it up to when it was. Now, did you show a pre-trip? Yes. Would you be in trouble for not showing that whole pre-trip? No, why? Because it doesn't matter what happened before then you still logged a pre-trip right before you drove. So when you left starts the drive line, what you did before you started your day doesn't matter. If I'm doing a, a straight 10, you think that I'm gonna wait until my 10 hour break hits to get out of this truck and start checking stuff? No, no way, no way. You can check this whenever you want to. You're, you're in it for 10 hours. 
So anyway, there's a way to save on your pre-trip. You don't have to just, you're not a slave to this, really. No more than you make yourself. And that's another thing for fuel. When I get out of this fuel island, I pump my fuel. When I let off, I come put myself off duty. Washing the windows doesn't go on duty. Pumping def doesn't go on duty. Def is just an extra expense to me. It's not fuel. I don't have to file it. I don't have to show a receipt for def. In some states, you need to show a purchase receipt, like I think North Carolina is one that shows the fuel theft, if you actually got a receipt for it. But anyway, that's, that's just pumping fuel. Only show what you have to, nothing more. There's no law against that. It's perfectly legal. Another thing too is your 30 minute break, which ties into when you're at the shippers and receivers. Now this only applies to if you are loading and unloading, but if you're somewhere and they have taken 29 minutes to get to you, or let's let's say your load and unload time is right there at, at like, you know, 28, 29 minutes. It was real quick, right? Well, you still need to show that you were unloaded. Wait that one minute. Once your 30's done, then put yourself on duty for your load or unload. How long did that load or unload take? It took as long as you show. That's it. That whole time before then with you checking in, which yes, it's a, technically supposed to be on duty. But if you did that, most of the time, you'd be out of hours in four or five days, depending on what you run. There's times where I've waited two hours to even start getting unloaded. That's supposed to all be on duty? Get out of here. You're kidding me. It's not making me money. If I'm not making money, I'm not working. If I'm not working, I ain't on this clock. Another way you can cut in your 30 into those times that take up all that time, if you had to sit there and wait for a little while and then you finally got unloaded but it was fairly quick and you get back in the truck and you've been off duty for 29 minutes, wait one more minute. Get your 30 out of the way, start your clock, show however long you wanna show for a load or unload, and drive on. That way you didn't waste that 29 minutes. That 29 minutes would have been wasted if you were to lose that. The same thing goes with if you're split logging, if you have a sleeper berth and you can actually split log. If you've been at a shipper for an hour and 50 minutes, you'd be stupid to leave before you waited 10 more minutes to knock that two hours off duty out of your way. And then that way, once you get done with your day, you've only got to log an eight hour sleeper berth. You only need an eight hour break. Now let's talk about a way to cheat the day. To cheat the day, I do it all the time. Let's say a place that you're supposed to deliver to closes at six, and you're, um, if, if you're like me, you're always running up to against where you're either just gonna make it or you're just gonna miss it. Everything you do in that day. If I've got five things to drop off, that very last one is always gonna be cutting it to the wire. If you're barely gonna be late, or sometimes if you're gonna be even two hours late, always call these receivers. Always call these receivers for drop offs because let's say you could drop that off and you still had four hours left to run that night to get somewhere else. Why are you gonna stop short, lose those four hours you had to drive, which is gonna affect tomorrow, and you still gotta wait till everybody opens up the next morning, gets ready to work. Just because a place opens at eight don't mean they start unloading you at eight o'clock. It don't happen like that. And then you're gonna have to drive those, you're gonna be four hours behind of what you were gonna be yesterday, just in drive time. Always call because number one, some people will just wait. Some places say they're supposed to close at six, but they really close at seven, they just stop receiving at six. Always ask. A lot of times they'll accept you anyway, but if they don't want to, there's usually a person there that will most definitely stay over a few minutes for a $20 bill, a $50 bill, and if that could have put you another six or seven or eight or $1,100 load ahead of the game, that, that 20, 50, however much you had to spend would be well worth it to gain that one thing instead of having it to do the first thing in the morning and you lose, it just messes up the rest of the week. Every single time it messes up the week. These are ways to cheat the clock to get ahead because this is all about making money. We're not doing this for fun. This is about making money. The DOT requires that you log certain things. Log certain things. That's all you have to show. You're not gonna be cheating your drive time, so you technically couldn't have 
been somewhere you shouldn't have been, it's all perfectly legal. There's not one DOT officer that's gonna ask you how long you were at a shipper or receiver to unload this load that is not on your trailer anymore. They're not gonna care. All you have to do is show it. If you have everything in order and it's all shown, it doesn't matter how long something took. Stop wasting your time. Don't waste your time out here. Your time is priceless. Maximize that to maximize your revenue. That way you're not losing days, you're not losing loads, you're not late, you're not anything except ahead. We'll see you guys next time.